Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at Marion Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we're looking at Roland's mighty new FP90 digital piano. We're going to be covering the sound and the tone engines. We're going to be taking a look at the action, talking about all its features and of course I'll be sharing some musical uh, thoughts and experiences on this instrument myself. If this is the first time to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you subscribed. We'd love the support, and of course, you'll be kept up to date with all things piano. So let's get started on the FP90. So let's talk about the sound on the FP90. We're going to split this up into the sound engine and then also the sound banks, so the tones that are loaded onto this machine. So the sound engine on the FP90 is pretty exciting uh, for something that's portable, something that's in this price range because it's got modeling. This is exactly the same type of technology that was available uh, first on the V piano that Roland uh, brought out and is now also available on a number of their other kind of higher end products like the RD2000 uh, has the modeling engine in there. And basically what a modeling engine is, is a computer algorithm that is completely generating the piano tone in real time as you press the key. So this is a complete change from what um, normally pianos, uh, or digital pianos produce their sound from where you press a key and it's playing back a sample, which is like a recording of another piano having had that note played. What happens with modeling is it's kind of like real-time computer graphics where you press the key and the computer from scratch, based on an algorithm, actually generates the tone. And it uses that uh, based on a number of other parameters that might be uh, occurring or happening at the same time. So if you have other notes pressed down, what's going on with the pedal, the velocity. Uh, in theory, this should produce a much more accurate playing experience and Roland's been at this a while and I can say for sure that this is definitely a very sensitive very accurate model that they've been able to create and it's the only FP um, model in the whole FP series that offers that so the sound engine on this uh, when you're in uh, acoustic piano mode or piano mode you're actually getting uh, some V piano technology in there, some modeling uh, technology. And so that gives you uh, literally unlimited polyphony. Uh, now when you switch into all of the other sounds, now you're back into the supernatural engine and that supernatural engine is still gonna give you 388 note polyphony on all of the sample based stuff. And so that's gonna cover things like your E piano, your strings, your organ, your pad, all that other stuff. Um, so that's a remarkable feature to have on a portable instrument. Let's just hear that piano for a second. Yeah, there's a really huge amount of color happening in the sound. You can tell uh, that all of the different harmonics um, per note are being uh, really processed and, and they're being colored in there. It's super cool to hear this because it usually takes a larger grand piano on the acoustic side to be hearing those types of colors and uh, it's engaging to be able to get this out of a digital piano. So. That's the, so the tone engine, or really kind of two tone engines in one, the modeling on the piano and then the supernatural sound on the other. When we get into the type of sounds that are loaded into the instrument, we're well over 300 on the FP90. Um, we have a really good selection of acoustic pianos. This was the concert piano that you're hearing here. Very colorful. I would say it trends a little on the bright side. But of course you've got your onboard equalizer. Uh, you could quickly kind of take care of that and I'll be talking a little more about the equalizer later. Then you've got what they call the ballad piano. 
that's mellow piano, bright, so on and so forth. So it goes through a number of different models. It's upright piano. Oh. Oh, I like that. That's mellow upright. <laughs> So it has, it looks like about nine or ten acoustic sounds, and then it gets into a number of other uh, keyboard instruments, harpsichord, uh, 70s uh, electric grand pianos, all that sort of stuff. Then we hit the E pianos, which are just gorgeous. The tremolo uh, amp simulator that Roland loads up on these is very convincing. And all of your kind of normal suite of E pianos that you're going to get on there, your Whirlies, uh, your Rhodes models, it's all there. The strings are a little poppy, they're a little bright, but when you blend them, totally passable, totally convincing. Your organ sounds are there too. And your pads. Something I would say Roland is really well known for is their pad selection. Like really rich and creamy sounds in there. Uh, I should mention that uh, once we get into the general uh, MIDI bank and even through the E pianos and the strings, this is exactly the same sounds that are available on the FP60 actually. So somebody watching this might also be comparing the FP60 and thinking to themselves, well, where's the advantage of the FP90? Um, well, what we were first talking about, that sound engine, that V piano modeling technology that's loaded in there, uh, that's one of the big reasons why you might consider actually springing for the FP90 versus the FP60. Now to round out the discussion of sound, uh, we can't neglect to talk about the speakers that are on the FP90. This thing is loaded up with 60 watts of onboard sound and they're really beautifully balanced um, and, and sort of factory set so that it's very difficult to actually distort these even if you kind of max the whole thing out. It outputs a ton of tone. So the FP90 can actually fill up a smaller medium sized room with sound without the need for any additional amplification. So for people who are do, doing some light gigging or using this for rehearsal or something like that, that's kind of a big deal. It's a lot better than having to lug out a separate big heavy amp and plug it in. This thing's going to give you 60 watts of sound right out of the box. And that's a handy thing. Now that's divided into two 25 watt mains and then two 5 watt tweeters. So you're also getting uh, four speakers spread out over those 60 watts. So that pretty much wraps up sound. We're going to move on to action now, but before we do, we're going to splash a slide up on the screen so you can see all those specs. Now let's dive into action. The FP90 is equipped with the PHA50 action. Now this is an action that came out from Roland uh, maybe what four years ago three or four years ago uh, and it shows up on a number of models you can get this now on the DP603 it's available on the RD2000 I know it's available on the FP90 and then I believe uh, a number of their HP and LX models also feature the PHA50 what's interesting about the PHA50 is it uh, follows the trend of incorporating wood components into the action so if you actually press the key down on an FP90 and you look at the side of the key or the core of the key, it's actually wood. And so what that does, because to be honest at first I thought this was a little bit of a gimmick, um, the more and more I play it, the more I realize that having that wood core actually properly simulates 
um, the dynamic weight and the dynamic resistance of the key. So you get a much more realistic um, as repetition speed. I feel like you get a much more realistic uh, keystroke just generally, every aspect of it, than you do when you're dealing with a hollow plastic key. Um, if anything, you have a sense that it's a lot more secure. Your finger kind of tends to pick up on a little bit of give and that hollowness in the plastic key, and it's just not there on the PHA50. It's a really solid key, um, and it's got a nice satisfying stroke as it goes from the top to the bottom of the key travel. Um, one big difference, or I should say another big difference of the PHA50 over its predecessor, which is the PHA4, and that's the action that you still get in the FP10, the FP30, and the FP60, uh, is this has a triple sensor on it versus the single sensor, which you're going to get in the P most of the PHA4 actions. So what is a triple sensor good for? Well, if you are using the FP90 for any kind of production, uh, if you're going to be feeding MIDI information from the FP90 into a tablet or a computer for any type of recording, that triple sensor really does make a difference. You're going to wind up having to do a lot less velocity editing. Afterward, you're going to find that it's going to output um, your, uh, your, your performance much more accurately. There's not going to be as many uh, sort of random spikes in the velocity or, or lost notes. So it's like basically uh, three ways that the key measures what you've actually done. And so it's like triple checking that it's accurate before you know, your computer or the tablet receives it. Um, Kawhi has done this as well in integrating the triple sensor and it does make a difference. So if you're using it, as I said, for production, the triple sensor is a good thing. If you're using this for any type of classical playing, I would say the wood core in the PHA50 is also going to be a really nice feature uh, if the budget permits you to get into uh, some kind of an instrument with the PHA50 action. In addition to the wood core and the triple sensor, we've got kind of an ivory uh, surface that's been simulated on here. Uh, it's subtle, but I like it. Uh, it's a nice, uh, it sort of adds a little bit of grip on the white key. This sort of looks cool too, I mean, for whatever that's worth. Um, I think it looks like a classy keyboard. Uh, it also has um, an ebony wood simulation on top of the black keys. So that's pretty much what you're looking at uh, in terms of the action. A really solid action that's going to serve uh, pretty much any genre really well. A more solid feel than what you get on the PHA4 and your triple sensor for extra accuracy. Let's move on to features. Thanks for sticking with us. One of the biggest features that I want to draw your attention to on the FP90 is actually the user interface. When Roland came out with the FP60 and the FP90, uh, the biggest change I would say was uh, this visual difference in how the controls are laid out, how the buttons are laid out, how you really interact with the instruments. Um, and I would have to say that this is one of the most successful uh, sort of redesigns, or forget the redesign, just one of the most easy to navigate, successful uh, user interfaces of any keyboard that I have ever used, period. Somebody or a group of people really spent a lot of time getting feedback from users and spending some time on the drawing board to make sure they got this right. And I'm just going to go from left to right, or your right to left, um, talking about every reason why this is an easy to use machine, virtually no need to ever consult uh, the user manual, and something uh, that's ideal for live situations. So you're not having to rely on all kinds of presets or all kinds of shortcut commands. You know, making these changes on the fly is super easy with how they've laid this out. So first of all, you've got a slider volume knob that's really easy to use. I know that sounds super obvious, but some of the uh, keyboards out there, even some of the rolling keyboards out there, uh, now have like button control on the volume. And just from a personal standpoint, I'm not a fan. I, I really like when you've got a physical knob or a physical slider that clearly shows where the volume is and uh, doesn't require any sort of, uh, uh, sort of button manipulation uh, to switch it. Moving on to the equalizer, which is probably my favorite function of this whole machine, uh, and this is on the FP60 as well. You've got a low, mid, and high EQ, which is so easy to use, and it's very effective. You can pretty much uh, get 
95% of the way to your perfect piano just by modifying and playing around with the EQ settings. Um, so you can see as I kind of jack the mids, jack the lows, you're getting dramatically different sounds out of exactly the same patch. Right, this is all just concert piano. So that's really cool. Plus for, I don't know, let's call it power users out there, you can actually go in and modify, um, you know, the basically it's a parametric EQ. So with a three band parametric EQ, uh, you can set these faders to represent kind of any three bands and the widths of the three bands uh, within the advanced settings. That's just fantastic. Uh, really enjoy that feature. Next one over, and this is something that I only <laughs> Uh, actually recently realized and so for current owners out there I'll mention this and for new uh, it's just a tip. The ambience button uh, allows you to quickly edit uh, you know whether the ambience is uh, what they call plain and rich. Really it's the reverb engine and so uh, plain means that it's a, sh it's a uh, shallow depth and short time. Rich means it's a deeper depth and a longer decay on the reverb. Um, what's a little bit odd is that you can't really turn the ambience on or off by pressing the button, even though the button light does come on or off, which seems a little odd. But that's how you do access the sitting. And I'll just show you right here. So this is, I've got ambient set to eight, so this is super obvious. But turning the ambience off, it's still there. So that is not really an on-off button. So if people are getting frustrated, it's simply the button that accesses whether you what the ambient slider. And then of course, you can turn it off like that, or you can do that. You've got your part slider, lower and upper. And so that's of course when you've got some sort of a split or a dual mode. Uh, that it, it's really nice and easy to be able to mix and match. I'll quickly demonstrate that. So if you've got strings and piano, you can completely shut the strings off, slowly mix them in, or completely shut the piano off. Really nice tactile controls. Love it. Then you've got um, easy access to your split dual mode or your transpose functions. Um, and then all your tone categories are beautifully laid out and plus the option for registration button. That really just means presets. That just means whenever you find some combination uh, of sounds and rhythm and whatever and you want to commit that uh, to memory so you don't have to recreate that uh, next time you turn it on. That's what your registration keys are there for. They're easy to use and they're really super obvious. Maybe that's the only thing you might want to use the owner manual for just so that you kind of understand the process of saving and creating those. Then we've got your function key uh, which allows you to go into all sorts of really cool stuff um, but I would say the biggest um, onboard feature uh, that you're going to want to play around with would be the piano designer. So this is where they're going to give you access uh, to that V piano engine. This is where you're going to be able to modify and play around with. And I'll just uh, actually get in there so I can show you all the stuff. So piano designer. This is where you can edit how uh, open or close the lid is or uh, the sound the key makes when you let off the key, the hammer noise, duplex scale, string resonance, damper resonance, key off resonance, like just insane amounts of detail that you have. Uh, and that's right on board and there's actually little graphics right on the display uh, to help you understand what it is that you are editing. And then finally we get onto uh, the song and the um, MIDI and uh, I guess USB audio playback function, uh, which is over here. So with a USB key, you can load up WAV or, or MP3 audio that you can play back through. Um, all kinds of different um, scenarios where that might be useful to you. Uh, you can also it, uh, you can also record um, onto a USB stick, um, which I know is very helpful for a lot of teachers. That's kind of a big educational function there. Um, and then the FP90 also has a mic input. Now it's not XLR, it is just quarter inch, 
but you can still get pretty decent microphones uh, for quarter inch and the mic can be easily turned on and off with your uh, microphone volume slider um, and it gives you compression and it also lets you have like a voice doubler uh, on it. Now I would demonstrate that except I'm literally the world's worst singer so just take my word for it that this function exists or try it yourself. It is actually a lot of fun. Um, finally, the uh, very last set of features that I want to talk about is not something you can literally see on there, uh, but nonetheless, it is really super handy. Uh, one of those is the Bluetooth connectivity. This is something that is built into all of the FP series uh, and certainly is on the FP90. And this is what allows you to hook up a tablet or a smartphone and control the instrument directly uh, with the Piano Designer 2 app. Uh, that lets you change the sounds, lets you start and stop the intelligent accompaniment that's built into this. Uh, also lets you do wireless recording uh, to your device. All kinds of really handy stuff. That Piano Designer we were mentioning inside, there is also a free app that Roland makes so that you can do this virtually speaking. And then of course, because it's Bluetooth MIDI, this is like a you know, a universal musical tech language, it's open source. This is stuff that uh, you can get apps, tons and tons of apps on the App Store or Google Play Store or whatever uh, that lets you make use of that wireless uh, MIDI technology. Um, and so this becomes uh, kind of just like a keyboard for apps that you can download. And, you know, some really well-known apps like Guitar, uh, or sorry, GarageBand and Logic and uh, all sorts of stuff like that um, you can uh, use with the wireless MIDI. Uh, and then finally, this is loaded up with a number of really well-known educational books. Now, the book is not literally inside. What we mean by that is a lot of the repertoire that's contained within the uh, instructional books is loaded in here so it can easily be played back and teachers who know about this uh, can integrate it really well into the lesson. Um, one last thing about the Bluetooth just to jump back a couple topics, you can also use this beautiful speaker system as a Bluetooth speaker. So if you have a, you know, a smartphone and you're wanting to play along to some of your favorite music, you can just set your smartphone, set the, uh, your FP90 as the Bluetooth speaker, and play along at the same time. So all of it's coming through the speaker, no cables, it's really easy to use. You're gonna love that feature as well. Last but not least, the FP90 comes in two colors. You can get it in black and you can get it in white. And you can also get it just in the slab format, which is what you're seeing here, basically just the keyboard sitting on a, uh, you know, a portable stand. Or you can get it with a really beautiful wooden matching kind of furniture stand, as well as a triple pedal system that Roland makes for it. So lots of different options on how to enjoy the FP90, whether it's gonna be sitting in one place or you're gonna be lugging it around. Um, but generally speaking, what we've got in the FP90 is a keyboard for all seasons. This is something that's going to accommodate uh, players of both uh, contemporary and classical uh, repertoire because you've got a really accurate action, very sensitive action, um, and a detailed piano tone so that people with you know, a, a high degree of expectation for, for all of that you know, tonal complexity, it's all there. For people who are using this to gig, you've got really nice, easy to use, you know, real-time control that's gonna make this uh, satisfying, easy to patch into other systems. You've got your audio outputs out the back uh, with quarter inch, which is a really great feature as well. Uh, and then of course, for singer-songwriters, You've got a nice. You've got the option of your microphone input and the ability to play back tracks uh, that you can then just enhance with some piano and some voice. Really, a beautiful, comprehensive, all-in-one unit from Roland. We've been loving it here at Miriam. I think you'll love it at home. So get to a showroom, try one yourself, and most of all, thanks for watching. Uh, we will see you back soon for another piano review. My name is Stu Harrison, and you've been watching Miriam Piano. Sun is right.